Today we're going to continue our exploration of functions of several variables. Now, in previous videos we've looked at these topics here. We've uh, looked at how to sketch functions of two variables and the surfaces associated with them. We've also defined a partial derivative and uh, looked at how to compute partial derivatives. And in today's video, we're going to find out how to calculate a normal vector to a surface and also look at a tangent plane. Okay, now these, uh, especially this tangent plane, is an analogue of what you already know from calculus at school where you looked at the tangent line to a, a curve. Okay, so let's give this a bit of a geometric feeling. In this particular picture, the green section is the surface associated with a function f of x comma y. And here we have a point in the xy plane, x naught, y naught. And you can see that what we've done is we formed two curves a blue curve here and a blue curve here, that are the sections of the surface. So we have some vertical planes parallel to uh, the XZ plane and the YZ plane, and they intersect the green surface to form these two blue curves. All right, now the red lines here are the tangent lines to these two blue curves um, uh, and you can see that they, that they touch the green surface at this point P that lies above this original point, okay? This, this point P lies on the surface. Okay, now it looks at least from this picture that this line and this line, the tangent lines, they lie in some sort of common plane. Okay? And, um, um, well, not only does it look like that, well, they actually do lie in, in a common plane. And this common plane is called the tangent plane to the surface at the point uh, P. Okay? So, um, let's, let's formulate what this tangent plane, uh, what the equation of the tangent plane should be. Okay. Now, <clears throat> basically, if I call this line, say this red one here, L1, and this line, L2, then L1 and L2 appear to lie in a plane that is tangent to the surface at P, okay? All right, now before we get to the equation of a tangent uh, plane, we're going to first find out how to produce a normal vector to the surface at a particular point, okay? Once we have that normal vector, then we can use it to form the equation of a tangent plane. Okay, now here I've claimed that a normal vector to the tangent plane and thus also to the surface uh, at a point P is given by this representation. Now here I've used curly Ds and I've written it as a uh, column, column vector. Of course you can also you know, write it like this. Okay, now note that we have a plus or minus sign. Well, in this picture, I'm just going to draw in the tangent lines from the previous picture. So here's L1, here's L2. And what we would like to do 
is produce some sort of normal vector. Okay, so essentially what, what we're after is to produce a vector u that's parallel to the line L1 and also a vector v that's parallel to the line L2. And then what we can do is cross u and v together to produce a normal vector. Okay? So that, that's essentially what, what we're going to do here. All right? <clears throat> now, if we go back to our original picture, okay, so we, we, here's our L1 and here's our L2. We know the slope of those tangent lines. They're just equal to the partial derivatives of f at our point of interest. Okay? Now, given that information, we can work out this vector u and this vector v. Okay? All right, so... If you look back to the, the, the picture from the start of the video, um, L1 has this slope, okay? And L2 will have this slope. So what we can do is form our vectors u and v as this and this. So to find a normal vector, all we do is we cross them together. You know, you need to have a knowledge of the cross product here. Okay? So if you work out the cross product, you'll come up with this. All right? Now, like I said before, you can have um, a, ho a whole bunch of different uh, representations for your normal vector because, first of all, they can point in opposite directions. So instead of pointing up this way, you can also have one that points say, down this way, all right? And of course, you can take any multiple, any non-zero multiple, and also have a normal vector, okay? So, for example, I can change the signs here and, and produce this. That would also be a normal vector, okay? All right. Okay, well, that's the normal vector and how we compute it. What can we use it for? Well, like I said before, we can use it to form the equation for a tangent plane. Now, we know the general equation for a tangent plane is given by this equation where A, B, and C are some numbers and at this, uh, for, for a non-vertical plane. Okay? And um, now what we're going to do is compute the equation of the tangent plane to the graph of this function at a point where F is a so-called smooth function. What do I mean when I say a smooth function? Well, a smooth function means that the surface has no corners or edges or uh, sharp peaks or faults. So in this picture, the first surface is smooth, but the second uh, picture, the, the surface there is, is not smooth. Okay, so essentially what we want to do is work out a, what A, B, and C are for the uh, tangent plane, the equation of the tangent plane. Okay? All right, now, um, it comes back to the basic idea that a plane containing a point P and a normal vector N is given by this representation here. Okay, this is the dot product, right? So we already know how to compute a normal vector to the tangent plane. That's where this n is. And this vector x, well, it's just arbitrary, so we can write it as a x comma y comma z. And p is a point on the surface, so we, we can write it in this form. Okay, now if I expand this left-hand side through the dot product, I'll actually end up with this expression here. So how does that compare back to um, what we already know? Well, 
what are these, what's this A, B, and C going to be? Well, just through a little bit of um, manipulation, A is going to be this value. is going to be this value, and then C is going to be this. Okay? All right, so you should write that in the form that makes you most comfortable. Um, this is probably the simplest form, and also this is a very simple form as well. Okay? All right. So let's actually do a problem and see how this all fits together. All right. We're asked to compute, compute the equation of the tangent plane and upward-pointing normal vector to the graph of this function of two variables at this particular point. Okay? So the first thing we do is calculate the normal vector. All right? Now, what do I mean when I say upward pointing? Well, essentially we mean that the k component must be positive. Okay? If the k component of the normal vector was negative, then it would be classed as downward pointing. And if it's zero, then well, it's neither upward pointing nor downward pointing. All right, so... Upward pointing. All right, so... going to be this form. Note that the k component is positive. And all I really need to do is work out these partial derivatives and evaluate them at our point. Okay? So, what is the partial derivative of f with respect to x at this point. Well, we go up here, we differentiate with respect to x, and imagine everything else is a constant. So if we differentiate with respect to x, we'll get minus 2x. And we want to evaluate that at x equals 1, y equals Two. Okay, so we plug that in and we'll get minus two. Okay. Okay, similarly, F sub Y Well, we go up here, differentiate with respect to Y partially by holding X fixed, and we're going to get This. So we uh, substitute in x equals 1, there's no x's here, y equals 2, and we'll get minus 4. Now we want to take the negatives of these, so we, it's going to be 2, 4, and 1. Okay, so we've calculated the normal vector. Now we're just after the, t the equation of the tangent plane. So let's go back to our equation for the tangent plane, and um, we can just substitute in. So the equation of tangent plane... It's the following. Okay, it's going to be f sub x at 1, 2 times x minus 1 plus f sub y at 1, 2 times y minus 2 minus 
z minus f at 1, 2. And this is all equal to 0. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in here and here for my derivatives at, a, at our point, and then um, the last thing to do is actually work this out. So basically I'm just substituting in here. All right, so we're going to get minus 2, x minus 1, minus 4, y minus 2, minus z. Uh, okay, so f at 1, 2, if I go up here, sub in x equals 1, y equals 2, I'll get 4. So this is the equation then of my tangent plane. Okay, now um, you can clean this up a bit, of course, and rearrange it, but I'm just going to leave it in this form because I've just about run out of room at the bottom of the page. All right, so let's have a look at what we've actually produced. The blue uh, surface is just the surface of, of our function of two variables, right? Here you have the, the plane, the so-called tangent plane. We have produced some sort of normal vector at that point. And you can see here that the normal vector lies in what's known as a normal line. Okay? All right, so why, why are these things important? Why is it important to be able to produce a normal vector to a surface? And why are tangent planes important? Well, let's answer the second uh, question first. Okay? You can see here that the tangent plane, at least if I don't move away from the point P0, the tangent plane and the surface... Um, there's not a large gap between them, okay? So in other words, a tangent plane, at least from this picture, appears to provide a good approximation to a smooth surface, as long as you don't wander away too much from a particular, from, from say, the, the, the tangent point, okay? Now, this concept can be used in linear approximation and, um, and actually a lot of applications, but that's the subject of another video. Let's get back to why a normal vector is important. Well, a normal vector plays a crucial role in, uh, for example, fluid flow and the idea of flux. Okay, what you have, for example, is, say, a smooth surface and um, some fluid is flowing over that surface or through that surface, if you like. All right, so... Say V is the velocity, the velocity vector of that fluid. What, what um, you would like to do in many applications is to compute the flow rate of the fluid over, so here's the, the surface S, over the surface S, okay, uh, in volume per unit time. Now, to do that, what you do is you produce a unit normal vector, okay, a unit normal, look at, the dot product of the velocity field on that unit vector and then integrate this over the surface somehow. Okay? That actually gives you um, the flow rate of the fluid over the surface. Okay? Now, in order to produce that, produce that answer, you need to be able to calculate a normal vector to the surface. In this case, a unit normal vector. Okay, now, you'll see this, this normal vector again in, uh, say, vector calculus, fluid dynamics, and so on. So let me just give you an example. This is a bit abstract. Let me give you an example here. You can see here we've got a vector field defined in the following way. Okay. 
Okay, now the arrows associated with it are just pointing straight up. And the surface here is actually this little disk in the XY plane. Okay, and the question is, what's the flow rate? Well, this is very easy because the velocity field is actually perpendicular to the, uh, to the surface. Okay, but that's not always the case. And when it's not always the case, we need to look at the angle. Well, I guess this dot, dot product. Okay, so you can look at the component of V in the normal direction to the surface. Okay, but like I said, You'll see these kinds of ideas more in second year um, when you do um, uh, vector calculus and fluid dynamics. So that's a little bit about normal vectors and tangent planes. And um, we'll continue our, uh, uh, our journey with linear approximation and error estimation in another video.